And um, Lushai uh, is a spoken word poet, right? There's some dots in there. But you're going to come and talk about what you do in that. And uh, this is very dear to my heart because my daughter also is a poet and uh, does poetry slams. So. So, that's, so I'm very excited about this. So here's some background on Lushai. She's lived in, on three different continents, um, but has found a home in Toronto's dynamic arts community. She believes in art as a tool for community development and uses her words to create dialogue around issues of identity and belonging. Since 2010, Lushai has made a name for herself as an award-winning poet and a powerful performer. She has competed in poetry slams. See, I knew it at a national and international level, including representing Toronto at the Women of the World Poetry Slam, the Vancouver International Poetry Festival, and the Canadian Festival of Spoken Word. She has also organized Canada's first underground individual slam championship. Hill works with youth-focused organizations as an arts educator, used, utilizing culturally sensitive alternative education practices. Lucky them. That's great. Uh, and so please join me in, uh, in welcoming the shy as tonight's special guest performer. in Canada. Citizen, London immigrant refugee. Status. Does human being fit into a category? No, please state your status. If my future depends on my status, and my children's future depends on my status, what do I have to do to get the right status? I cannot change my mother tongue, I cannot change where I come from, I cannot change the fact that I will be marginalized because of my status. Your answer is incorrect, please state your status. I have survived checkpoints and pointed guns. I have survived rape to walk barefoot on the land that bleeds with the blood of my people. I have survived the murder of my eldest son, a bullet in the back of his head. I could not save him. Do you know what it means for a mother to not be able to save her child? I have left the homeland of my ancestors to walk on unfamiliar soils. I did not look back. There was too much grief in my heart. I have slept in the stars that promised me that I will find my way home. I have prayed to the Creator to help me feed my children. I have stolen to stay alive. I have lived through terror. I have danced through danger. I am here only to be asked questions about status? Your answer is incorrect. Please state your status. My story cannot be bound to status. My breath, my bones, my sinew hold secrets that are older than time. My ancestors flow through this blood. They are the link to my past, to my future. The lines carved on my face are a testament to all that I've faced with. All that I've faced, I've carved my name in the stars. I am a constellation that seeks refuge on earth on this land, and this land might look different from my homeland, but it is all the same, landed immigrant, citizen, refugee, this story is bigger than status. What, madame, is your status in Canada? My story is bigger than status. My children deserve to live. My people did not ask for this bloody conflict. We did not ask for economic dependency. We did not invite your mining companies to come and steal from our land like a parasite storm. We did not want to leave our homelands, but we are here to seek security, to seek a better future status should not be a language spoken between you and me. This is your last chance. Please state your status. Well, you, my friend, would call me a refugee, but this does no justice to my story because stories are filled with so much more than words. I am from oral history and muscle memory. I am from barbed wire mass graves and shrapnel. I am from scorching sun waves and dust storms, from journeys not yet taken, tomorrows not yet reached. I am from broken promises and broken windows, from ocean spanning east, west, from courage and sorrow to all that has come to pass, from simple words that carry the weight of revolution, from daybreak to moonshine, I am ever changing. I am a mother a daughter, a widow, a sister, a survivor. And of all these things I am, you choose to call me refugee? Meaning person with limited mobility? Meaning person who cannot move across borders as easily as the goods that are shipped out of my country? Meaning less than you? Meaning other? Meaning dependent? Meaning extracted from me? Meaning reduced to one word, status refugee? This is not who I am. This word was forced onto me. What about human dignity? My status is status. Your status is denied. Your documentation is inadequate and you will be deported. My story is bigger than status. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I'm not gonna share too many words. I think I'm just gonna go into my final poem. And uh, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for the work that you do. This, this last poem, I do this for my mother, for my grandmother, for all the women who came before me. Happy International Women's Day, and thank you again for having me.
I have stones in my throat. Graveyard catacombs for all the words that have been laid to rest before syllable could even burn on this fiery tongue and roll dead out of my mouth. I have stones in my throat. I am pregnant with words that ricochet off one another before committing suicide in this middle passage, a miscarriage that almost cost me my sanity. So I grind down my lips to stop these mangled words from escaping my mouth in a bloody massacre of revenge for the silence that has me choking on words that have been hemorrhaging a slow death underneath the weight of these stones. Wait, these stones have been waiting to trap words, waiting to take flight, waiting to make sound. But like freedom has unfinished business, like Iraq, like the DRC, like Somalia, death comes before even the first cries of life. How could victory ever be carved out of bones and blood? How can they teach us to be equal but never to be free? Hold your breath, young girl. Breathe through your nose. Bite down, eyes down, face down, go down, and here. Take these stones and swallow them. Silence tastes like midnight after he left you bleeding on the inside, inside your empty bed. Silence tastes like drowning in the sterile psychiatric ward of a hospital, watching the vacant eyes of your mother. Silence tastes like biting your lip to muffle the tsunami of an orgasm because good girls don't make too much noise. He beat the colors of the sunrise into your face and you smiled toothless for him. He gave you a cradle full of empty promises and you accepted with arms outstretched in forgiveness. He refused to acknowledge his destruction of your temple and still you choose to remain invisible. Tell me how many stones does it take to break a person? I have stones in my throat, stones the size of fists, reminiscent of the fist he imprinted in my flesh with the velocity of a sadistic hurricane. Stones that sometimes cause my body to convulse, a lifetime of accumulated asphalt trying to tear itself from my esophagus like the children of Israel fleeing Pharaoh. Stones that bear the names of my mother, my grandmother, and all those who carry their scars on the inside because outside, the world is too busy stoning us to death to realize that there will come a time when we will sever the noose of silence and speak out with the force of a thunderclap tornado unleashed. And there will come a time when we will cease to pass our stones to our daughters and give them permission to speak. And there will come a time when we will regurgitate the stones in our throats and hurl them at any person who tells us to swallow. This is not about David and Goliath. This is about collective survival. I have stones in my throat. Ticking time bomb weapons of war, and you better believe that one day I'll use them.